The click goes on afterwards. The niggas go into their whole, and Irv was big on West Coast shit. Like, people gotta understand, he wanted Murder Inc. to be, Murder Inc. is pretty much just a carbon copy of Death Row. If you look at it. They tried to merge with Death Row before Sugar got locked But that's, up. yeah, but that's all down the road. That's like when Big Homie came home and it, they did the it, show at Trafalgar Square. It hit so much Square. now when DMX was saying to Ja Rule, you trying to be Tupac. Then you got Irv, you trying to be Shug. Oh, I get the Pac okay. because that too, like even me and Pac <laughs> and all that shit, like he was going out of his way to connect us. Like he, at that time, mm. I'll be honest, I wasn't a Tupac fan like that. Like I liked, the, I liked um, Brenda's Got a Baby. That mm. would always come on Video Music Box. I right. remember that shit would always be on. So I liked that, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really into his music. I was Queens, nigga. I was, I want to hear us. I want, let me hear some Nas, let me hear, let me, uh, the Tribe, let me hear Pete Rock, CL, let me right. hear Pooh Bar and them niggas. Like, that's the shit that I would rock out to. And that's really because that's an extension of law. Right. So we do the show, the click comes on, and the way Irv structured this show, they was taking all death row joints and freestyling on top of them. And then they was playing, like, Get the Fortune or whatever. And they do the show, and I think that that experience was the beginning of the, the split. The split. Like, I knew the split was coming. And we went home, and you know, niggas felt some type of way because niggas was like, yo, we watched them niggas not do nothing. Like, I remember it was some point during the night where I was either talking to uh, Irv or maybe it was Nichols, one of the two. And I said something about, like, being on point or whatever. I think it was Irv who was like, man, keep that idiot shit over there. And I was like, wow. You pretty much telling me I'm on my own. Right. Cool. So we get home, a couple months go by or whatever. Now Big Homie is home. I don't even remember when we initially met. Big I, Homie? And I, at, Cream. Yeah, I know. I said Big Homie. Is right. That, you said you don't remember when y'all met. I'm trying to remember. I remember there was like a game room on like, I want to say God Brewer or something like that. I remember the day I met him, but my dumb ass again. Head in the clouds, I'm not putting together that this is like the legendary. Right, right. I didn't know, you know, I knew. Chris he was, was young when he got locked up. Right, so, so I, I don't know that. I just know what I heard. And it was Chris who I think introduced us. You gotta keep in mind, like, Chris one nigga no matter what happens. Like, I know if Chris was there that night, he wouldn't have stood by and not done something, right. But rule, all them niggas stood, they, and I don't even think that rule and black and them stood by cause they was on some fuck you shit. I just think that that nigga was telling them, yo, oh, let the niggas is. be on the idiot shit or whatever. Like he would really paint us out like we were just Knucklehead. barbaric idiot asshole niggas that I mm -hmm. ran around with. Right. So, um, Holmes is home, now I saw Irv Gotti, and the next thing I know, yo, I didn't even know who had a deal at Def Jam, none of this shit. Nobody I didn't did. know. Nobody I, did. I didn't even know that. I didn't even, I didn't, I, I didn't know about Holla Holla till it dropped. He started doing it on the Hard Not Life tour. No, but I was on Hard Knock Life to at least the last show, the show they did in Miami. I'm there. If you look at one of the, I think it's Fade to Black or whatever. Mm -hmm. You see me on stage with he my- did, he, did, he did it the whole, he opened up, then he did it the whole Hard Knock Life tour. The next thing I know, this nigga's not really coming to work at Blunt. And I don't know 
that you're at Def Jam like that all the time. So I'm not aware of all of this shit. I'm so busy trying to do what I'm doing and you know, it's, it's long days, long nights. If you're not in the studio, you at a club, you, you doing what rappers do, bro. Right. So fucking, um, the shit with Rule kind of really took me by surprise. Like I, I knew X, he was doing shit developing X. I knew with Hove, they was working on their whole on the Rockefeller thing, and I remember when they had that buggy eyed Benz and they silk wrapped it with the logo, all that shit. Like, all of this shit was still, everything was always a million miles per hour. So, now I'm really noticing changing. And at this point, now, TVT is, blunt is like turbulent because. There were so many people that worked there and left. Like, I remember Cookie Rodriguez was like mm. some radio dude that worked there. I remember people were just coming in and out, in and out. Right. Um, and um, I, like I said, again, we ended up going, I think it was to like uh, Freaknik or something in Atlanta. But the label said I could only bring X amount of people because they was only paying for X amount of hotel rooms and all that shit. So now it's just really me and Flush and maybe my brother, my cousin Reb on the road. And maybe two, three other people. And But mainly Irv was, you know. And I think we have somehow found a way to put that shit past us. And we saw Tupac. That freak Nick, he was in front of a hotel, and the nigga Irv was like, yo, that's Pac, go jump out and give that nigga the, 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 the CD or whatever. And I was like, I don't know that nigga, I'm not going up to that nigga and saying that, I don't know him. And that nigga, again, nigga said, what? Nigga, go give that nigga, the, like on some, and I was like, all right, here we go again with the... <sighs> right. But I say, yo, just do it. So I get out the, the, the truck, the, the van, whatever. I see Pac, that nigga's chilling, he's smoking his blunt. Walk up to him, same thing I tell everybody, yo, this my name. And at that time, TVT had these stickers that were red with Mike Geronimo on them. They were like oval shaped stickers. So I give them the CD and the sticker. I'm like, yo, this is my shit. If you like it, bang it. If you don't, bro, you could just, you know, break that shit up. You never hear from me again. And the nigga Pac was mad cool. That nigga just looked at the shit. He's like, Mike Geronimo, huh? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, I'm gonna listen to it. So mind you, Irv never gets out, nothing. He right. just, I guess, surveil watching the interaction. Right. So I come back to the, the van, he's like, yo, what the nigga said? I was like, nah, he was cool. He ain't he ain't diss me, he ain't shoo me away, none of that shit. I was like, he actually took the shit, put it in his pocket. Fast forward, big homie is home. Um we end up going to the tunnel. And I think it was it was me. Reb, my brother, my man Unk, that I just met through Big Homie and shit, through Prime, <coughs> and BJ. And I, I wanna say it was Madge and Stretch from Live Squad. Right. Mm. And Stretch was cool the minute I met him. Like, same thing like when I met Harm and them niggas. Cool as fuck. So, you know, when you come in a tunnel, um, there's a bar as soon as you would walk in. Like you would come in from that side and there was a long bar. And if you went this way, there was a staircase that went up. You could sit here. There was a bathroom that way. And the stage is that way in front of you. And on this side to the right, there was like, like a little area with like mirrors and shit and you would walk through, but it's like a passageway that cuts to the back of the stage. Right. So, um, I think it was me and Stretch and BJ. We was talking, whatever, but Pac was there. 
I don't know if he came with us or if they called him and we met there or I can't rightfully say. But I do remember like Pac was with us and we the weed niggas, we the, the dope head. Right. So, you know, we, I'm not standing around, you know, big homie and them, they talking whatever talk they talking by the bar. <laughs> so me, Pac, um, Reb and my brother Kev, we all walk off and we smoke, you know, we, he, we get ready to roll. So I asked him, I'm like, yo, you, you want to smoke? I got some weed. He's like, nah, I got weed, you know, but we walk in and some nigga bumps the nigga pocket and all the weed falls out the blunt on the floor. And to me, it looked like, you know, a nigga was just walking and he might have just bumped you by accident and you, no big deal. So he goes in his pocket, he pulls out more weed. I'm like, but I see the, the bag, like the size of the bag. Back then, this, you were saying something if you had a bag, like a Ziploc about yeah. this big. Right. So I was like, oh, this nigga, he got weed. I'm going to pay off for you, nigga. I got like a couple of dubs from body bag yeah. over here and shit that I... LP or right, something. Right, facts. But he LP. got more weed. Lending them pounds. So he pulled more weed out. And now we, we made that cut to that area that's like where you could walk and it'll lead you to the back of the stage. And we walk in and Pac's rolling up and um, same shit. Nigga comes and bumps him. Again? And the weed falls. Same dude? Again. Different dude. Oh. It's the tunnel. Okay. But now I see this shit and I'm like, nah, that wasn't no accident. Mm. Like, that was like some disrespectful shit, my nigga. So there was like these mirrors with like a, um, it was like a platform that came out like this flat so you could put your drinks Drink on it or, yeah. or whatever. So I tell the nigga, I'm like, yo, let's stop here. So you can roll and your you can weed roll up. up. And then when he did that, I told my brother and my cousin, I'm like, yo, go on this side of him. Because the shit was like shaped like a half moon, a half oval. Mm -hmm. He's this way with his back rolling. So I was like, yo, go that way. Like, you go in front of him here, you go here, and I'm right here. So you can't bump the nigga now. Mm -hmm. But i never forget the look on his face when the nigga bumped him. The nigga did this look like... Like, yo, I'm tired of this shit. Not that he could, it wasn't a look like I, feel, I, I, I won't feel. get into it. I'm just, I'm, I'm exhausted <laughs> about getting into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. That's exactly the look. I was just talking to him about I that saw. shit today. I was just talking to him about that shit today. So now we stop, he's rolling up, and I tell him, like, yo, we, we good, bro. Like, we, we good, don't, we all right. And we start moving again. Now we getting ready to go back to where like stretching and homie and BJ and them niggas is. Um, so I told, I don't know, I can't remember if it was Unc who went first, but before Pac started work, I was like, hold on. I said, um, yo, so one of us take point. And I think it was either my brother or Unc that went in front. And then Rab, Pac was there, I was behind him. I was like, so that's how we was going to walk back towards that area. And then I don't know how it happened, but I ended up getting in position where I was kind of like next to him or in front of him. And I'm watching this nigga walk towards us, but just his face, I could tell, like... It was the problem. Right, he was coming to do something. So before he got to us, I just, with the elbow shit, and I was like, yo, Next nigga that fuck with this nigga, we gonna fuck everything up, man. And I want to say the nigga said he was from BK, so he said some shit like, yo, come on, Mike. Them with. It's like, yo, this nigga ain't doing shit to you. Like, he's not doing anything to you. And the nigga didn't say nothing. He got out the way, whatever. And I think that was the moment me and him got cold. Right. Um... And whatever they was talking about at the bar, I knew it wasn't, it, it was whatever the old It wasn't niggas, your business. Right, it wasn't my business. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that Nichols fucked with him like that. Like that, you know what I'm saying? But the next day, Nick is like, yo, that nigga Pac was like, what's up? You know, tell you what's up. 
He's like, yo, he fuck with you, kid. Da -da -da -da. And I was like, yo, that's just good to hear. I didn't really think about it past that. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf, you heard.